In this lesson, I'm going to provide an introduction to reading lead sheets for jazz piano. So if you've had problems reading lead sheets in the past and making the music sound good, then the stuff covered in this lesson will be really helpful for you. If you can already play lead sheets, then you might find that you know a lot of the material I'm going to cover in here. So I do have some more advanced jazz st standard tutorial lessons that you can check out. So first of all, I'm going to explain what lead sheets are, why the lead sheets are laid out the way they are, and then show you the best way to interpret them so that you can get that jazzy sound. So we're going to use Miles Davis's tune, Tune Up, as it has a very short form and it contains a number of simple major 2-5-1 progressions, which are very easy to navigate for beginners. So the version of Tune Up that I'm working from can be found on page 437 of the Real Book 1. So here's the cover of the Real Book 1, and if you head over to the resources section of Piano Groove, you can find a link to where you can buy that book. I'd strongly advise that you get yourself a copy of a real book so they contain hundreds of different tunes and so if you're serious about studying jazz you need to get hold of one. So if you're a classically trained musician or if you have any background in non-jazz piano styles you'll probably be used to reading music on two staves. So generally the top stave is what we play with our right hand and the bottom stave is what we play with our left hand. So in jazz, we don't follow this approach. Here's the first four bars of tune up. And what you should immediately notice is that we only have one stave instead of, instead of two staves. So you may come across jazz that's written in two staves, but generally this is what you're dealing with. You should also notice that the chord symbols are above the stave, and this tells you what chord should be played over that measure or that bar. So the chord symbols indicate three things about the chord. The first thing is what the root note is. So the root note is the letter. So we can see with the first bar we have an E. So that means the root of the chord is E. The next bit of information is the chord quality. So we can see that it says E minor. So that means that we need to play some kind of E minor chord. The final bit of information is the 7 on the end, and that indicates that we need to include the 7th of the chord. So that's the 7th. So that would be an E minor 7 chord. So we're also given the melody. So the melody is what we play in our right hand. So we can see that A is the melody. So the majority of the time the melody will be in the treble clef, and so you'll play this with your right hand. So that's a quick overview of the layout of the lead sheet. Now let's have a closer look at the information. So looking at the four bars, we can see three chords, an E minor seven, an A seven, and a D major seven. So that's a two, five, one in the key of D major. We have E minor, A seven, and D major seven. So if you don't know what a 251 is, I'd recommend going and checking out the major 251 lesson, where that'll give you an introduction on how to play major 251s. So now I'm going to play the first three bars how I think a beginner jazz pianist would attempt to play them. So I'm going to move the melody up here so that we have a bit more room to play the chords. So that didn't sound jazzy for three reasons. The first is that all the chords were played in root position and also stacked up in thirds from the root to the seventh. The second is that there was no voice leading between the chords. So voice leading is when you use different inversions of the chord so that you don't have to move your hand around too much. So you can see there's a big jump between each of the chords and that can make it sound very disjointed. The final thing is that the chords were played within a very limited range on the piano. So they were all played in this area when we have the whole piano to play on. So now I'm going to show you another way to play the three bars. So I'm sure you'll agree that that sounded much better and that's because of three things. 
The first is that the root note was played low down where it belongs. The second thing is that the chords were voice led very smoothly from one to the next using the third and seventh. And the final thing is that I spread out the notes of the chord across a wider range of the keyboard. So that's the top to the bottom. Last time we were playing, well, the chord was only sort of this, this big. This time, so we can see the chord almost spreads two octaves. So this achieves a much fuller and richer sound. So now we're gonna work through the entire form and we're going to voice the chords using two hands and pay attention to voice leading. So starting at the top, we have an E minor 7. We've got the root, the 3, the 7, and the 11 is the melody. So to get to A7, all that happens is the, the 7 of E minor 7 drops by half a step. So that's good voice leading. Instead of going like this, all it is is one note changing. So with the melody, and the same, once we get to A7, all we do is drop the 7th of A7, which is here, by half a step, and that gets us to D major 7. Now onto the second line, we have a D minor seven. So again, we've got the 11th in the melody, so we can voice it the same as the E minor seven. We've got the root, the third, the seventh, and the 11th. So that's again, that's a two, five, one. This time it's in C major. So we've got D minor seven, G seven, and C major seven. So with the melody, So let's go through those two lines. We have a C minor seven, so we've got the root, the seventh and the third, and that goes to an F seven. So all we, all we do, that's a 2-5. It's actually a 2-5-1 because we've got a B-flat coming up next, B-flat major. So a 2-5-1 in B-flat major is C minor 7, F7, B-flat major 7. So to add the melody in, we've got... So you can see the melody climbs over the F7. then down to E flat major seven. And then we can play this like, just like we did in the first bar. So this is a two five, there's no one chord, it's just an E minor seven and an A seven. So E minor seven, A seven, B flat major seven. And then we have an E minor seven and an A seven, so we can play. And then we're back to the top again. So just let me play that play all of the form for you using just thirds and sevenths. So I'd advise that you practice that through like that until you can play it comfortably. I was probably playing that then around 100 to 110 BPM, 
So this tune is supposed to be played very fast. That's why you can see the medium up in the top left corner. That means it's quite a fast tune. Um, so if you play it around 100 to 120 beats per minute, that'll be a good tempo to master it at. So now we're going to go through the entire form again, but this time we're going to add some interesting chord extensions and alterations. So the first extension we can apply is the E minor seven chord. So the E minor seven chord has A in the melody. So A is the 11th. That means we can play a Kenny Barron chord. So the Kenny Barron chord is a minor 11th chord. And I, I've actually created a dedicated lesson on this. So go and watch that for more information. Down to A7. And then we can play a D major 13 chord. So that sounds a bit richer than just the third and seventh version. So we've got the root, the fifth, the ninth, the third, thirteenth, seventh, and then and the third again. So let me play that for you. So moving on to the next line, we can also play a D minor Kenny Barron voicing. So it's the same as the E minor one, but just down a whole step. And this works because we have the 11th in the melody again. So G7, and then we can play a C major 13. So it is a bit of a stretch here. We've got the root, the fifth, and the third. And then we've got the 13th, the 7th, the 9th, and the 3rd. If this is too much of a stretch, you can play it here as well. So that would be... So just let me play those two lines for you. Continuing now, that's a C minor seven, but we could also play. So that's the root third, fifth, seventh, ninth, and the third. So then I played. Play the, the B flat major, so we've got the root, the fifth, the seventh, the third, seventh, and the third. We could also put the ninth in there. And then to get to E flat, we've got the root, the fifth, third, seventh, and the seventh is the melody. So here we have a D and a C just um, on their own, sort of in the melody. So we could actually voice these with so what chords. And then we could drop down to an E minor 11 chord. So that's just stack thirds all the way up. So let's run through that line. So it definitely sounds more interesting. So let's go all the way from the beginning. So on the A7 there, I played I played an A7, flat 9, flat 13. So that would be that would be A7 with a natural 9 and a natural 13. And I played So this voice leads nicely from the That's the E minor 11 to keep your pinky down on the A and then drop down to that A7 flat 9 flat 13. And then 
you're back up at the top of the form. So let me run through that again for you. So I hope you found that lesson useful. It was just an introduction to lead sheets um, and I hope it showed you how you can start off simple and then start to build the chords up slowly. I'd recommend playing through the standard just using the root thirds and sevenths. And then once you can do that comfortably, I'd look at some of the extensions that I outlined for you. So if you do have any questions, just drop it in the comment box below.